Hey everybody, it's Natalie with Treasures of Mini, and today I thought that I would do an update video on the photo oxide technique. And that is where we are going to take some photo paper, which today I'm going to be using this brand. I have used several others. The only one so far that I have found that does not work is a Kodak brand. But I cut the pieces down, but since we're just kind of doing some little demonstrations, I didn't want to waste any. So the first piece that we're going to do is just the basic... Um, the, the first one that I stumbled upon. And those are the Distress Oxide inks that I'm going to be using. And I always go from lightest to darkest. So you can see that I put down some fossilized amber, sprayed it with water, and picked it up. And now I have some cracked pistachio and sprayed it with water and pick it up. And you're going to see me continue to do that. I didn't think that I had quite enough here, so I'm going to do some more. Do remember throughout this entire video that in between every single color that I do, I hit it with my heat tool. You must dry it in between all the layers. Now I'm going to hit it with some fired brick. And honestly, I should have stopped with the fired brick at this point, but I want to point out that when you look at it before you wipe it off, you can see here it's very light. I shouldn't have done this one. Um, when you wipe it off, it gets very bright. I'm also going to take this number four. I'm just going to use it throughout this demonstration just to show you how you can stamp on things as well. So I'm going to stamp this number four in the fired brick. But then I'm also going to stamp it, stamp it in the fossilized amber so that you can see, you know, a darker color over a lighter color. And now with a baby wipe, we are going to wipe it away and let the magic begin. So here you can see how pretty it came out. Um, you can see the fired brick for really well. And you can see the four that we did in the fossilized amber. It's just really light. I also wanted to show you that you could take regular distress inks and any other dye base ink and you can stamp on top of this with it and just give it a second to dry and it is there permanent. As a matter of fact, I'm also going to take some black memento ink and I'm going to just stamp a four with that as well just to kind of show you that you can stamp over these. Um, like if you had a flower stamp, you could stamp over it as well. So now I'm going to go on to um, seeing if we can do some like resist here. So I'm going to be using Versamark on one side and Perfect Medium on the other side. I'm going to stamp two of the fours, one on top and one on bottom of the Versamark. And two with the Perfect Medium, one on top and one on bottom. I do apologize for the background noise. It's Sunday and everyone's home, including the dog. So now I'm going to lay down some worn lipstick and I'm going to do this blotting technique that we were doing already, but I'm just going to do it on the top half and then I'm going to hit it with my heat tool. Then I'm going to get my brayer out and I'm going to brayer the bottom numbers. And since we, I just wanted to pick up one more color just on that top part and the extra ink that I have left here on my mat, I'm going to spray some water down and pick it up with another scrap piece of photo paper. So now we're going to take our baby wipe and we're just going to wipe it all off and we'll see what we've got going on underneath. So you can see where we used the brayer, it's a lot more intense than where we just um, did the splotching. But um, there is a difference between the Versamark and the Perfect Medium, but honestly, we're going to do more with that throughout the video. And I think you'll see that it really doesn't matter either way which one you use. So I wanted to see if after we had wiped it off already, if we could go back and add more and how it would take. So I put down some of the purple color, which I can't think of right off the top of my head, and went through the same process. And you can definitely see it well on the top part. On the bottom part, it kind of does like a shadow. And I think that's because when you brayer it on, you're not using any water. It is pure pigment. So now I want to try this out with some stencils. So I'm going to tape down a piece of photo paper and I'm going to position my stencil where I want it over my photo paper and with some washi tape, I'm going to tape it down as well. Those are the two colors that we're going to be using. Only this time we're going to use a blending sponge. 
and I am alternating between the spiced marmalade and the fossilized amber. Once you get that everywhere, you're just going to lift up your stencil and we're going to set that piece aside for a second because there's still a lot of ink left on the top of our stencil. So what I'm going to do is spray it with a water bottle and with that scrap piece of photo paper, I am going to lay it down and rub it down really good. And look what it does. How cool is that? So we're going to set that aside and we're going to go back to that piece we were working on. After we did our stenciling, I'm going to come back and lay in some cracked pistachio and worn lipstick. And remember, we're drying in between. And when you wash it off, you can see that the cracked pistachio kept its true color on the white parts. So now I want to bring back in this scrap piece that we picked up. Um, a minute ago and I want to try to line the stencil back up perfectly over it and I did tape down my piece of photo paper and I'm also going to tape down my stencil then I'm going to come back in with some broken china and faded blue jeans and I'm just I'm going to do three different ways on here so the one side we did it with the blending sponge now I'm going to roll in some broken china on that side and on this side, I'm going to take it straight from the pad to the stencil. And with a baby wipe, I'm going to rub it around. We're going to take it out of here and see the difference. So because it's dry, we can go ahead and take our baby wipe to it and wipe it all off. And we'll be able to see the difference that each one made. So you can see the first side, we used blending sponge. And it has a very faint um, this to it the middle we brayered but the thing is, is when you brayer you can only do the one color at a time and on the far end we rubbed it in with a baby wipe now there was still some ink left on that stencil um, but because we rubbed the one side with the baby wipe I needed to put some of the ink back down so I put some more back down sprayed it with the water bottle and with my brayer I'm rubbing it pushing it down onto some photo paper I will tell you that if you do this with your fingers, um, you'll get better coverage. You can see how I have an outline. For some reason, with the brayer, it leaves outlines. If you rub it with your hand, you'll get a solid cover. But just like we did the other piece, I'm going to line it back up with my stencil. And then I'm going to come in with the fossilized amber and the spiced marmalade. And I'm going to cover the entire piece again. Now, just like with all the rest of the time, you're going to still have ink left on this stencil that you should definitely not waste. And this is what we have. Um, I am going to save this ink. I'm going to set it aside and we're going to use it a little later. But with our baby wipe, we're going to go ahead and wipe things down and see what we have. And here it is. It is so pretty. I have actually gone back in with twinkling H2Os and painted in the whites. Now, I personally think this technique works a little bit better if you use a stencil that's not quite as detailed. So with this stencil that I think it's going to work a lot better with, we're going to get out the perfect medium and we're going to cover the back of it entirely. And then I'm going to get a piece of photo paper and I'm going to lay the stencil with the perfect medium side down and we're going to brayer it and make sure that we get a really good coverage. And then we're just going to lift that up and we're going to go back to our smooshing technique. So I'm doing the same process that I've been doing all through the video so far um, and remembering that we dry, we use our heat tool to dry in between each layer. Um, but when you do this, you cannot be that precise on where you go or how much you get. So it was about right here that I decided I wanted to add some purple, but I didn't, I wanted to have more control. So when I want to do that, I actually put it on a piece of acetate and add water. And I think uh, Christina Warner calls this smooshing. So we're going to do some smooshing with it. But then I decided that I also wanted to give it some more layers. So with some spruced ice, I went in with my stencil and put it some circles and then I even wet the stencil and laid it on top to get uh, the ink that was on the stencil there as well. Now I'm only going to wipe off half of the side because I want to stamp on one side that we've already wiped and then on the other side that we haven't wiped so that we can see if there is a difference. Because in the past I have seen a difference with this. 
but this time it's all the same. So I'm thinking that maybe some photo papers may make a difference on this, or maybe it's lighter colors that make a difference. But here they both look just as bright. And you can see all of the different layers and you can see the resist from the perfect medium. So we're going to do a, another piece almost exactly like this, but I got a little carried away and went a little too far, but we're doing basically the same process, only we're going to use Versamark. But this time I'm going to put down my photo paper, lay my stencil on top of it, and then I'm going to smush my Versamark all over it this way. But now I have Versamark all over the stencil still. So I grabbed two little pieces of scrap pieces and I'm just laying them down on top of it and running my brayer over it to pick up any of that extra Versamark. And we're going to use these two pieces later. So I'm just going to set these aside for right now. But now I can remove my stencil and we can go back to the same process of the kind of like smushing it down or I don't really know what to call this. We'll just call it smooshing too. Um, it's a little different, but we'll call it that. And I did the cracked pistachio and the worn lipstick. And now I'm using the acetate to do the broken china and some of the purple color, which I still cannot remember the name of this color. And I, this is where I went crazy. I wanted to show you how you could stamp over stencils to get a layered look. However, I did this backwards. I should have, I mean, you can see I did it there, but I should have put the orange ink on the back of my stencil like this first, where I could get a good coverage wet it, then lay it down like this, press it down really good. Um, I'm using my rag here because my brayer was dirty. <laughs> um, and then stamp the four. And then you would have been able to see it more. You could kind of see that there was a light uh, spiced marmalade lining there. But to kind of make it stand out a little more, I've come back in with my sponge and some cracked pistachio. This is where all this is going crazy. So you can kind of see it there. And because I already had spiced marmalade on my brayer, I decided why not? I'll just go ahead and do some of the circles. And then since we already had orange go in, I brought back in that stencil that had the spiced marmalade on it. I wet it and I've laid my piece down in it and used my brayer. And then you can see what we have. Now I wanted to warn you, if you use a baby wipe with color on it, it's going to transfer to your piece if you have some white showing. On this one, I don't have any white showing, so it's not gonna make any difference. But just keep that in mind if you're using one that already has ink on it. And once you get it all wiped up, here's what we have. And I, I mean, even though this was not the direction I was going with this one, I, I think they're both very pretty. So you can see the difference here. One is with the perfect medium, the one up top here. And the other one is with the Versamark. And I think they both work just as great. Um, I don't think you should rush out and buy one over the other. So now we're going to try um, using those scraps. So this is the two scrap pieces that we picked up with the Versamark. I wanna do one with my brayer. So I put some broken china on one end of my brayer and then I put some faded jeans on the other end. And that time I put both broken china and faded jeans on and I'm just going back and forth trying to get like a gradation. And then with the baby wipe, I wipe it off and look how intense and beautiful this is. It is this is really, really pretty. This is the other scrap piece. I'm going to do the same process, only on this scrap piece, I am going to use the blending sponges. I am really sorry about all the background noise. The dog is really wanting to go outside and pacing. My daughter and my husband are back there trying to do some yard work and getting us ready for a move and it's driving the dog nuts. So I do apologize. So anyway, back to this, um, you can definitely see the difference. I think it's so, so pretty. I think um, you can also tell that I think the resist technique works better if you do it smushing or with the brayer. I think when you rub on it with the blending sponges, it kind of takes away from the um, ending result. So now we're going to do another stenciling technique. So I've got another piece of paper down here. I taped my paper down, but I forgot to tape down my stencil. 
But on this one, we're going to use fossilized amber and cracked pistachio. And with a blending sponge, I am going to randomly add that all over this piece. And then when I'm done, I'm going to lift out our photo piece and set it aside. And I'm going to blot down some more ink in the same areas that we already had. And then I'm going to mist it with water and lay down a new piece of uh, photo paper to pick up this extra ink. And so you can see we have the same thing, only not as intense. Now, if you leave the tape on there, you know which side you had taped down. And to line it back up exactly, you're going to flip it over. So your tape will kind of help remind you that. So I'm going to go back and pick that other, that, that piece up line it up exactly and tape it back down and then I'm going to come in with broken china and uh, faded jeans and I'm going to add it all over this piece as well and when I'm done with this I'm going to take it out just like I did the other one and we're going to use the ink on this side exactly like we did uh, with this one for the other piece I hope that made sense so here's this one <laughs> We're going to set it aside. I'm going to show you all this at the end. I'm going to come back with that other one. And the stencil is going to let me know I need to flip it over because of the piece of tape. Line it back up perfectly. Tape it back down. Be careful when you do this because there is ink under there. So you don't want to push it down too hard until you're ready. Once you have it lined up, go over it with your brayer really good and lift it up. And this is the two pieces that we made from using the ink left over from each one. I hope that made sense. Now there's one more little technique that I like to do when I do these. I'm gonna put down some fired brick. With a wet brush, I'm going to flick in fired brick and fossilized amber. And we need to let these dry. They do take a little bit longer to dry, but you can do it with your heat tool. And then take your baby wipe and wipe off the chalkiness that forms on the top once it's dry. And here are those two pieces. And I think it's so neat how you can kind of get that embossed resist technique like this using your stencils. Okay, now we're going to use this stamp set from Stampin' Up! And I'm going to stamp a little ocean scene with Versamark. Um, I will have the name of this stamp set on the bottom of the screen here. And with Versamark, I'm just going to um, try to stamp out a little scene. You guys can't see it, but when you're doing this yourself, you'll be able to see it. I did have a little bit of a dirty stamp with the octopus, so that's why you could kind of see it. And because I'm doing a scene, I'm going to use the smooshing technique because this bottom part, I want it to look like the bottom of the ocean, like maybe sand or dirt. So I used um, two different colored inks down there. And then I'm going to go from darker to lighter up here. So I'm using the faded jeans and then I'm going up into the uh, broken china. And right then I decided to just kind of flick in some purple uh, little dots, I guess. And with my baby wipe, we're going to wipe it down. And you can see that it did resist and it's really, really cool. But then I got to thinking, well, if it resisted, then maybe that means I could stamp over it and it keep its true color. So with some fired brick, I'm going to re-stamp the little crawfish and the little crab. And then with some cracked pistachio, I'm going to stamp the octopus. But I decided to stamp him at the top too, just to see what it would look like without the resist. And I think this turned out really, really cool. So using the Versa mark does help it when you want to stamp back over it. So the last one I want to share here, we're going to use some Brusho. Now I put Versamark all over the back of my stencil because it helps it stick to the photo paper. And as you can see, I'm really taping this stencil down because this stencil is really thin and it's kind of bent up. And I really need it to uh, stay as flat as possible. Then with some water, I'm going to spray the entire area. And then I'm going to come back in with some blue Brusho, a yellow and a red. When those mix, they'll make other colors as well. And once I have that down with my water bottle, I'm going to spray it really good again. And with a scrap piece or, or another piece of photo paper, I'm going to lay it over it and pick up um, what was left on top. 
And I usually do this with a paper towel, but all I had with me is just this regular towel and I lay it down over it and I really let it soak up any extra water that's on there. And then from this point, we can lift our stencil. And this is messy guys. So I'm gonna lift my stencil really carefully and kind of clean up my table. And this is what I got from that. Now I wanna tell you that um, I usually take my paper towel here and just kind of blot everything um, in case I have any water little bits that are left on it. And also because brush is little crystals that like kind of melt when water hits it. And not all the time do all those little crystals melt. Like for here, for instance, I'm gonna show you I'm going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to wipe down on this in the same uh, direction each time. Well, that was paper towel, but now I'm going to come back in with a baby wipe. And with the same, in the same direction, I'm going to work my way down the piece. And you can see that there's light streaks of color. And that is where there might have been some crystals left on there that when the baby wipe hit it, it reacted and it leaves these really cool streaks. I'm actually going to show you a picture right here of a card that I did a while back you, with that streak method. And that was just wiping in the same direction and it caught the crystals. I think that's really cool. But anyway, now I thought I would, show, I would tape the stencil back down on this one and then come back in with some fossilized amber distress ink and do the same process take it out and wipe it off with a baby wipe and this is what you get. So you can use the um, oxide and brusho together. This is a card that I made using brusho on photo paper, but I didn't use a stencil. I just did it in some diagonal lines. And on this card I made for my son's birthday, that background um, sky, I used brusho to make that. And if you're interested, I, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on that. Okay, so that's our video today. I did want to let you guys know that we are moving from Hawaii back to the mainland for the military, and we are going to be moving next week and the following week after that. So I probably won't have a video for a couple of weeks, but I will try to get back as soon as possible. Please give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe and make sure you click on the little bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. And I love reading your comments. You can also find me on Facebook at Treasures of Mini Craft Corner, as well as Instagram and Pinterest at Treasures of Mini. This is some pictures of a few cards that I have done with the photo oxide technique. I have videos to almost all of these. So at the end of this, if you click on my face, you can go straight to my channel and it will show you all of my videos. This is a card that I did, and I also did a video tutorial on it. The background is done with the photo oxide technique. And this is a picture of the, one of my subscribers followed along with me and made the card and sent me a picture. And I wanted to share that with you guys. Until next time, hugs and loves from my craft room to yours. Bye.